On this episode of Heartbeats, Stephanie's surgery takes an unexpected turn. Will she and Patrick still be able to reconcile with their dreams of a future family? So you can see so much for educated guesses as to what we'd find and what we'd end up doing. I don't want to lose my best friend. That's what it boils down to. And Jennifer's cochlear implant gets turned on, but there are no guarantees it will work. Can you hear my voice? Can you hear what I just said? On the last episode, Stephanie said goodbye to her family as she went in for surgery to remove tumors on her ovaries. I must say I am very nervous about this. No matter what I'm doing right now, it seems like I can't do anything to get rid of the pain. Just months ago, she and Patrick were planning to start a family. I like to um, try to start a family. The sooner the better. Yeah. If we can even have twins right off the bat, that'd be excellent. Now, with the discovery of ovarian tumors, that dream is on hold. I had cysts on my ovaries, which I thought that's all it was, until they did a CAT scan and they found a tumor. Her tumor, whether it be what we call a borderline tumor or a malignancy, involves both the ovaries, and that's unusual. It, it happens sometimes, but it's unusual. And it's problematic in young women who right. have no children or want more children. The next step is to see the fertility specialist and extract my eggs to save them and freeze them. With the likelihood of ovarian removal high, Stephanie underwent treatment at this fertility clinic. Prior to surgery, she had her eggs extracted fertilized, and embryos frozen for future implantation. Already taken out a few eggs already. Stephanie wants to carry her own children, but if the tumors have spread to her uterus, this will be impossible, making surrogacy the only option available for this couple. If Dr. Covens had to remove her uterus for some reason, then of course that would you know, have a, a huge impact on her fertility. We have, wow, 20 eggs. In the first phase of surgery, Dr. Alan Covens discovered the ovarian tumors. That's tumor there. It's thick, eh? But he also discovered something else. I don't like the looks of that. That's on the back of the uterus? Yeah. Taking out the uterus is not what Stephanie wants, but Dr. Covens may not have a choice. Tissue samples are sent to pathology for an immediate answer. What kind of tumor cells is Dr. Covens dealing with? Doesn't it look like it's adherent? Waiting for the answer, surgery moves into the second phase. Dr. Covens finds the tumors too widespread to remove laparoscopically. Instead, he'll have to use a traditional method. So I think we're gonna need to switch to a laparotomy. Okay, so we're gonna switch, we're gonna convert to a laparotomy. A laparotomy. This involves a large incision in the abdomen to remove the tumor growths. Meanwhile, Stephanie's family waits, unaware her surgery has had a drastic change of course. The ideal situation in ovarian cancer is to remove all the visible tumor. You know, our primary goal here is to cure the cancer. On the last episode, Jennifer had a cochlear hearing device implanted. After decades of progressive hearing loss, it's her last chance to join the world of sound once again. I have no hearing in my right ear and very little in my left ear. 
about three minutes or so. Unable to participate fully with her family or friends without lip reading, Jennifer's quality of life has plummeted since total hearing loss struck just months ago. Jennifer's also found that things she's taken for granted, like driving safely, are now jeopardized. I have to take extra care when I'm driving uh, because one of the things that I don't hear is sirens because I wouldn't hear an ambulance coming up on me. Anxious to do something about it, Jennifer hopes a cochlear device implanted in the inner ear just might rescue her from total deafness. She's young. Uh, she's recently lost her hearing. She's incredibly well motivated. Uh, and so from, from our perspective, she's, she's the ideal sort of person to benefit from this technology. She's still working. It's now five days after surgery and Jennifer's back to have the staples removed. How are you? Great. How's the ear feel? A little numb, but other than that, it's pretty good, <laughs> considering what you did to me. I want you to just put your head back and I'll take out your staple. And this is the receiver stimulator that will actually be put into the patient. This is the part that will be sitting on the skull under the scalp. And this part here, which contains the tiny little stimulated electrodes, will be threaded into the inner ear. You can feel it. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 That's where the device is. Okay. Now, when the skin, when the swelling settles down, you'll be able to feel it more. Yeah. How's your sense of balance? Yeah, it's good. No problem? I drove here myself. Excellent. Yeah, so that's good. So do I see you again or not necessarily? Only if you have any problems. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. You take care. I'm anxious now to get the hearing part going and uh, get back to normal living again. As she continues to recover, Jennifer won't know if the implant will work for her until it's actually turned on in nearly a month's time. It's the fourth hour in Stephanie's surgery. Her family finds they're waiting longer than expected. Worry settles in. I just hope she comes out clean bill of health and we can have a beautiful family. I mean, it's been our wish for a long time. Surgeon Alan Covens is about to remove Stephanie's ovaries. He and his team have had to resort to a traditional abdominal incision to get at the extensive tumor growth found. What are you going to do? Move it around? Can we um, send this to pathology fresh? That's right ovary. Let's get... Uh, I'm going to give you the left ovary. Cut on my side here. You can see that's really ugly looking. Yeah. That's the left ovarian tumor. Nope. The worst case scenario is if this is a typical invasive cancer that has spread beyond the ovary, be it visually that we can see gross tumor or we find microscopic tumor in other uh, sites. It's now up to pathology to determine what type of tumor this is and how invasive. Immediate results will help Dr. Covens decide whether he can save Stephanie's uterus. But a deeper lab analysis will occur over the following weeks and it will determine how endangered this young woman's life is. Stephanie is undergoing life-saving surgery. Widespread tumors have been found beyond her ovaries, so her fertility may be sacrificed. She's got quite a few friends out there that have had babies and that, and got something that she's always wanted. She met Mr. Wright, we got married, and you know, that was her dream. So, um, we definitely made the right decision. I know there's no doubt in my mind that she needed us to, to do this if we're gonna remove all the tumor. There is tumor beyond the ovaries. There's tumor on some of the peritoneal surfaces, the lining of the pelvis, maybe the abdomen. I, it's suspicious looking. You know, that's a little, I guess, uh, disappointing. 
it does sort of change the prognosis a little bit for the worse. Dr. Coven's focus now is on one thing, removing all the visible tumor he can find. So he's got no choice but to do the one thing Stephanie was hoping he wouldn't have to do. So now we're just taking out the uterus. This is the parent, that's the tumor there. Dr. Covens has to give Stephanie's family some troubling news. What we did find was um, tumor on both the ovaries and some, there was some tumor spread to the uterus and, and some of what we call the lining of the sort of pelvis. It's not as bad as you may think in the sense that um, it looks like this is what we call a borderline tumor. You know, if this is a borderline tumor, then she likely will not need any further treatment or chemotherapy, and the likelihood of it coming back is, uh, I'm going to say, smallish. But we did, unfortunately, have to take the uterus out because it had some tumor on both the front and back part of it. And, you know, our primary goal here has been to, to sort of cure the cancer, get rid of the cancer. So to see that life can uh, throw you some pretty uh, nasty blows, and you just got to get up and fight again, right, and continue on. So are you saying you took away our uterus? Yes. Or yeah, we took it out. Altogether? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling very disappointed for Stephanie that she won't be able to carry children. Um, I personally think that that's going to devastate her. I know there's a, other avenues, but her feelings and her wishes are very important to me. And uh, I just hope she uh, she's resilient and pulls through this. But you know, suddenly when you hear it, it's like, whoa. Because I know I saw her this week and how excited she was getting about the idea with the eggs being retrieved and the outcome on Wednesday and that, yeah. I felt good for her and that now it's kind of blown out the window. The main thing is that Stephanie's okay, you know. I just hope the hell the cat's hasn't gone anywhere else. That's the main thing. We just don't want to lose our little girl, you know. But just seeing her healthy is uh, the most important thing. I don't want to lose my best friend. That's, that's what it boils down to. Stephanie now has to recover and then wait nearly a month before pathology can reveal whether cancer cells remain to threaten her life. Four weeks after Jennifer's cochlear implant surgery, and today, the device gets turned on for the first time. Well, it's pretty exciting today to get uh, the implant activated. This is a special day, yeah. Whether I walk out of here hearing or not, I have no idea. It's a huge step on the road to hopefully bringing Jennifer back from the brink of deafness. So today's the big day. Yes. Are you ready? This is your speech processor. Okay. I'm gonna put it on. I'm just gonna do a few tests to get the processor ready for the sound. Okay. So we're gonna start. Okay. I wanna remind you that speech won't sound natural. It's gonna start very soft. Do you hear anything? I'll talk to you. I just got a, um, a, I can. Can you hear your I own voice? I can hear something. If I talk to you right now, how's the volume of my voice? Yeah, it's, now it's about a seven. Bring it back a little bit as I talk to you. Am I just hearing your voice? You're hearing your voice as yeah. well. So you're hearing... Does it sound like you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> what does it sound like? It's... Come on, yo, 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 yo. Like... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, can you hear my voice? Can you hear what I just said? Or are you reading my lips? I'm reading your lips. Okay. Yeah. But you what? must be able to hear something. I can hear and hear. Um, can you hear a little bit of me, or are you are you just reading my lips? I can hear. It's. Oh, I'm hearing myself. <laughs> 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 so 
So, uh, so let me talk first. I can, I can hear his voice now, but it's all it's all staticky, mm -hmm. kind of. But it it gets confusing because I don't know if it's me or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I am talking. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a, uh, it's, it's really, um, it's really staticky, mm -hmm. yeah. I can hear things, but I have no idea what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's pretty weird. <laughs> 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 so that's it. You, you hook me up and send me out into the <laughs> yep. noisy world. <laughs> into the noisy world. It's going to be really frustrating yeah. for the next few days. You're going to wonder what sounds are. So you have to work together to begin to identify different sounds. It's, it's so weird that it's not like, oh, wow, I can hear. If you had to live like this for the rest of your life of what I'm hearing now, I'd probably say forget it. Not knowing if she'll ever understand what she's hearing, Jennifer goes out into a cacophony of sound trying to make sense of it all. Only weekly progress visits will determine if she'll soon hear normally again. It's been a month since Stephanie's surgery to fight ovarian cancer. Her care team thinks her cancer is borderline, meaning it might not be a full-blown cancer. But only the pathology analysis will reveal for sure, and the results are in. The, the news is kind of good in the sense that, you know, this tumor was uh, what we thought uh, a borderline tumor. We sort of talked about what borderline tumors were. Um, but there was some tumor spread, you know, outside of the ovary, as you remember we sort of talked about on that peritoneal surface. It's a situation that we would normally give people chemotherapy for, like a cancer. Um, the purpose being to A, try and prevent this from ever coming back, or B, if not that, then try and delay the time period as to when it could come back. Um, it will unfortunately cause hair loss. But the good news is, as best we can tell, all the visible tumor's been removed, and so the purpose of this therapy is treating microscopic disease. What is the likelihood of this coming back with her particular case in the future, long term, short term? So if we look at this as a typical cancer, the likelihood of curing this would be at least in the sort of, I'd say, 60% range. Now, this could be higher than that, but I, I don't know, I can't give you a more definite answer than that. Yeah. And you're just going to have to take it one step at a time and hopefully it won't come back. Luckily, Stephanie's tumors were low grade, but the treatment she envisioned did not include chemotherapy. And it's devastating. This is definitely not what I want to hear. I was hoping that it was going to be all, like I know she has cancer, that it was going to be all clear that we could walk away. But now watching her have to go through this chemo is going to be hard. It's hitting, now it's getting too close to home when it's our own. Well, this is turned out not so good, so. <laughs> it's two months after Jennifer's cochlear implant activation. What she heard at first was unreal and unnerving. Was it ever going to work? How's the volume? She's now at Sunnybrook for a test to gauge her progress. There were branches everywhere. Nope. The kitchen sink was empty. The kitchen sink was empty. The chicken laid some eggs. The chicken laid some eggs. The fish swam in the pond. Uh, something in the pan. 41%. That's pretty good then, isn't it? So, yeah. When we assessed you for the cochlear implant, you scored 4%. Yeah. So a huge improvement oh, with yeah, this device. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'm really pleased. Today is my first day back at work at Canada Basketball after having 
the cochlear implant operation. It's funny you take care of this. You could do that. Just to be able to have my, my fans and family and co-workers speak to me in a normal tone of voice has, has been great and that's been the real success of the operation. I still have some ways to go and I know that my hearing is going to get even better so I'm looking forward to that too. As Stephanie's chemo starts, she's grateful that the worst is now behind her and that this phase of her treatment will help ensure her survival. I just want you to take a breath in. You appreciate things more. You appreciate each other more. Your family, your friends. The doctors are taking a precaution by me having the chemo, which I would rather have so that I can make sure that there's no chance of it coming back. After this is over and the doctor says it's clear, I'd like to say adios. Certainly Stephanie and Patrick face a challenging future in the short term, but they're still focused on the bigger picture. What's our next goal after this? Starting a family. We really want kids. We're definitely ready. on the next episode of Heartbeats. A vibrant young journalist confronts alarming news. I, I was shocked, I was shocked. And she said, you know, you have thyroid cancer. It's a miserable existence. It can affect your periods, your hair, your skin. The anger is beyond belief. And a dedicated OR nurse finds her life almost shut down by crippling pain. She's endured it for too long. And now, after waiting over a year, Relief could be on the horizon. They know the pain from their arthritis is gone, so there's, there's good light at the end of the yeah. tunnel. For more information, go to www.wnetwork.com.